thanks to my friend Craig Ford at Pella Motors, my Grand Cherokee Jeep, which has been amazing. I'm going here today and I cannot wait. Lynn Paxton is going to show me around. I get a personal tour. Something tells me this is going to be special. Good morning, sir. Still locked. <laughs> so this is where you basically live, from what I understand. I don't know. A lot of times I've been here. Uh, the 18 car, that the Charlie Sachs car. Yes. Of that oh yeah, there. there it is. And there's a picture with Mario. It was one of his first competitive rides in '64. We have five of Mario's cars here. Do you really? Yeah, his early cars. Wow. Yeah, but that one and then this is his first open wheel ride, the three quarter midget. <laughs> and then the Gapco cars, the car he won his first sprint car race in 1964 at the of Salem. God, that's beautiful. Look at him there. Wow. How long is, when did this first start, this museum? Thir uh, 89 was our first build. What was the first edition? But you're in it. Okay. The, okay, this is the first. And matter of fact, we're, we're gonna try to expand this. Here, I've got plans upstairs. Now here's the horn car. That's getting ready to leave. Let me turn the other lights on. Wow. It's around the corner here. Okay. That oh. was one of his first sprint car rides. People said to me, this would be incredible. And they were right. Isn't that spectacular? Right, really, 48. That car right there won winner 24 races, won 23 out of 24. <laughs> Tommy right? he wants to grow. Tommy felt bad that, that if he wouldn't have beat him, he'd have won every race that year that he ran in the sprint car. Isn't it just beautiful? You must be so proud of this place, Lynn. Well, there's a lot of stuff here. We're, we're down a little bit right now because of the auction this weekend. We yep. Cars are coming and going. And we got some cars that are out that are going to come back in. <laughs> what? So we start here with our midgets uh, very early. I have that cycle here because the early midgets use a lot of these cycle engines. Yeah. Actually, the, the, the sports owner cycle uh, race car that we were early on was going to be sold. Were, were they twin? They were twins, weren't they? That a lot of the midgets ran. Were they like a twin engine, a V twin? It was four. Yeah, right. Sports owner. Like right. This. I mean, they, yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
That's a beautiful Indian full stop. Uh, yeah. Well, of course, uh, this has got a Van Blurk in it, which was a, a boat motor. This was built in the, in the 30s, 37. I see the name Ben Cook a lot when I look into history in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, Ben. Well, there were three Ben Cooks, actually. Oh. They were grandfather, father. I knew the... I didn't know the grandfather that well. I knew the father. I dealt with him quite a bit. And then I raced for his son. And he had a pair of twins, Ben and Billy Cook. Oh, wow. How many people do you get come through here every year, have you? You don't know. We don't charge admissions. So you don't? don't no. Okay. So there's no way of knowing. Do people make a donation or anything? Yeah, we have a donation. Yeah, box. good. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I understand. It would strictly be a guess. Yep. This is uh, this midget here is a Gordon outboard, one of the first tube frame midgets built in the late 30s. Uh, this actually won the 41 3A championship <laughs> with the uh, Alto outboard. That engine right here is what's in this. Outboard. So it would have been good for racing and good for fishing. Yeah. <laughs> this is car was built in, in the you know in the 30s. Of course, it's got a V860 in it. 60 sitting over there. Normally I'd have the engine right here, but like I said, I'm moving stuff here all the time. Is a lot of this stuff loaned to you? Well, the, the sign will tell you. It's on loan from or yep. donated by. Okay. Uh, we own that one. We own the motorcycle. Yep. We own the 33. We own the 28. So. Bob Tacconi. Wow, I'm just seeing some of these names just... You know, as I'm walking by. Yeah, well, these are all the ARDC champions. And these are more than just names. It shows you the cars, you know. Yeah. In fact, this car right here is going to be sold at the, the auction on Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, the Allen car. Do you have any idea what you think, what kind of money something like that I would think it'll bring about 10 grand. Okay. Just And just bought by enthusiasts? Or people oh, with a... Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, yep. there's nothing else. Like, the car won its last race, got put away 38 years ago, and that's just the way it is. Well, I looked in the distance from Nick Fornorno Jr. here. I thought it was Rico for a second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, 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 well, <laughs> his dad, there's Nicky Sr. He was champion in 1950, and his son was champion all those years. So. Wow, yeah. He had, a, he had a mortgage on that thing from 82 to... Yeah. 86 well, and then Len 95. Duncan did too. If you see, Len Duncan was oh, wow. an yeah. all time champion. And also, uh, here. Tim Buckwalder. Ray Bull. He won it, I think, five years. Yeah, wow. Five years in a row. Gosh. I certainly know the name Tim Buck Buckwalder as well. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Well, there's Steve Buckwalder. Right? Yeah, yeah. That Buckwalder name, full stop, yep. yeah. <laughs> you know where all the light switches are. <laughs> oh, this is, this has got to be your pride and joy, this wow. corner. Oh my goodness. Lynn, this is spectacular. It works. Oh, you know, serious. You know, we, we use the, you know, we use it. Uh, it's not just a, a looking shop, it's a working shop. This is just as far that Tommy won the last 3A championship and the first USAC championship, 55 and 56. Look at that exhaust. That must, those things must have generated some heat to your right side back in the day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> want to touch them. So they're the old blackboards up there on the thing there yeah. as well, the original? Yeah, wow, this, this, these are right out of Tommy's garage. The bench, the blackboards, if you look at that picture out there, you're going to see everything. It's, it's here, it's real. And he saw this? Did he get the chance to see this? Oh, yeah. He helped, every time he come over, he brings something. He must have been so thrilled. Yeah. This is an there's, there's, there's a picture of 1955. So that's what it looked like. Yeah. 
And if you look there and then look, you're gonna see everything. God, this is tremendous. Here's uh, Boyd's book. And in here. Of all the drivers on dirt, the best I ever saw uh, stands out in my mind as the best. Now, when you get a guy like Foyt saying that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Mario, here's the obituary. Mario called him a giant. Chris Cotterman called him a star. Foyt called him his idol. So you can get an idea where this guy was in a packing order. And you got guys like that calling the shots. It's just spectacular. Lynn, you've done an amazing job. What a way to tribute your hero. I see this TV is. Here's, uh, now she's my age, and there is that TV. Oh, wow. <laughs> Tommy never threw anything away. This is all Tommy stuff here. It's you know? so important that we don't throw this stuff away. Isn't and everybody it? likes to sit in that car. Oh, I bet. There's, well, there's Wolfgang. There's Wolfgang in it. And there's Steve Kimser. Sammy. Yeah. So that Everybody was... said, how'd you get Sammy to smile? I said, apparently enjoyed what the hell he was doing. You know? <laughs> there's Marcus. There's the other two uh, NASCAR drivers, or the other two Miracle Car drivers, Deb Snyder and Dwayne Carter Sr. Well, they were alive. You recognize that guy. You got his picture taken in it too. Jeff Gordon. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Yeah, there's Jack Hewitt. You know, everybody and their brother wants, <laughs> wants their picture taken in that car. It's kind of the height. Isn't this beautiful, Lynn? Wow. Yeah. Our friend, uh, we actually took that out of his basement. Uh, That's what church windows should look like, mate. Well, <laughs> you look at our library upstairs, he made a, a, a door for it too, uh, stained glass. And there's his stained glass number 61, you see it up above the case. Oh yes, the yep. Case. And that car's sitting there. Wow. Here's the Chitwood car now. Oh. The horn car was sitting here, because here's all the horn trophies and all the horn stuff is here. But we moved the Chitwood car over here because the horn car's leaving. And they're both of the same era. And Tommy won them both of them. Jeez. This is... Uh, <laughs> oh, Lynn. Kenny, Kenny Brick, or uh, Kenny Hickey, he was Mr. Offenhauser. There he is, he's a young man. There he is, 87 years old, still working on Offenhausers. And when he passed away, he made sure we got his desk and his files and all his stuff. It's beautiful. Blown off here. And the, the connecting rods and stuff. And this, this small offy which we had running was built up in New York. Can you imagine building something like that and then having it running? Even these little ones here, they're all oh, specially wow. made. They're not, you know, they're no kits. Yeah. There's all, all those pieces had to be machined. Goodness. They said it was amazing. They told me I would love it. It's amazing. It's a credit to you, mate. Yeah, this is Hershey. Uh, oh, wow. It opened the same year that we drove open. Same week, actually. Now, this is going to be our Gerber display. Yep. Uh, we're building the side here, much like the Hendershit's deal. Yep. And we're going out and picking the final car up out of the Gerber shop. Uh, this month. Oh, you must be excited about that. Yeah, I am. Here's, uh, well, here's the Gerber display we did at Knoxville. Yep. Oh, and yeah. It's going to be much the same as that. But there's a lot of Gerber stuff that we brought in already. God, look at that photo of the Grove. That's opening day, aerial view. 1939. 1939. Yeah. May, May 21st, 1939. Not a bad gate there. No. You reckon they sold a few hot dogs that day? Yeah, well, they said they had to delay the show an hour because the traffic was lined up all the 15. Oh, I bet. Well, I was lucky enough to 
be with oh. three of the guys that that were in the first race, you know, uh, Tommy and, and Chipwood and Buster working, they all three finished in the top five. They even got the photographer on the Yeah. Yeah. On the bridge. Yeah. This was built oh, Herbie Wolf built this in the fifties. And I can attest to it being correct because I worked in the as a young kid I worked in the refreshment. <laughs> Did you really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 59, 60. Okay. Oh, look at the tag. This is uh, World War II aircraft engine. This is a Ranger aircraft engine. See, yes. the problem on that and the plane, that would be tough. But then they surplus that after World War II. And the Aukies back then were 4,000 bucks. And these put out the same horsepower. And you can buy them for 75 bucks. So the guys from the Midwest, IMCA and CSR. $75? Yeah, they were surplus after World War II. So they'd flip them over like that, put Ford carburetors, injectors on it. That's what's in this, you know. What about the weight? Wasn't the it heavy? It, it only weighed 375 pounds. It was light. It was magnesium and stuff. It wasn't heavy. What a find that was for the industry. Well, World War II was very good for racing. For a lot of years, yeah, surplus, you know, for a lot of reasons too. Oh, sure. Oh, the technology. See that idea of sitting in the car and looking back over the left yeah. rear is still the coolest angle for a race yeah, car picture, right. isn't it? That's Marshman. Now this car is being sold. That's that's going to be sold. It's uh, you'll see it. It's over here. There's there's hel there's his helmet. Okay, there's that helmet. <sighs> his wife, years just a few years ago, realized we had the car. And she had just lost her second husband to cancer, so, right. you know, because he got killed in the 60s. So she sent his helmet and these pictures of so that they should be with the car. Do you still get excited about new pieces when things oh, come sure, in? Oh, sure, absolutely. That's, yeah. that's what makes the world go round. It does, doesn't it? Now, uh, we have the cook car. It's out of here right now. It's, that's, it's actually yep. in the trailer getting ready. That's what I'm supposed to be doing here in, in another 10 minutes. Okay. Running cars down over the hill. Now, uh, you see these side panels? Yes. Okay. Uh, the government didn't always know when they were helping with the race cars. <laughs> that is so good. It is. It is. I, we picked two cars up in Illinois, and the guy had these hanging. He said, you want them? And I was going to say no till he flipped that around. I said, oh, heck yeah, I want them. It's only 20 mile an hour. It was a school zone. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Gosh. And of course, we. Uh, let me turn. Well, I'm going through here. I'll turn these lights on. I don't know if they bother you or not. But... No, this just. <coughs> just remarkable. Okay, Silver Spring. Yeah. So I was talking to um, Justin Snyder, had coffee with him about half an hour ago, and he was telling me that Silver Spring was a pretty oh, epic place. Excellent. It was the best racing there was around here. Tight competition. God, look at the Lincoln jacket. Jeez. This is uh, the Bud Graham Ford. Ray Kelly was just about on beat in the 60s in this. Really? I know I wanted to grow. I won two races in a row in 65. I thought I was a hot dog. <laughs> and I think Toby won one or two, and I think Mitch won one or two, and Tully won 15. So we, oh. know, we know who the hot dog was. You got perspective. I got to see the back of this car a lot. Now I look at this color, and I don't even have to look at the rest of the car. Oh, you don't. That's a white 29. It's one. This is actually this is new blue, which is uh, uh, old blue looked this light, but it was a small block car. This car here they converted to a big block. First time they ran it was at uh, Atlanta. And Pitts won down there in it. My goodness. This is the original hood off Keith Kaufman's Travis car. And that was Jimmy Nace's Travis car. We... <sighs> Lynn, this is just breathtaking. Yeah, this is the Maynard Boops car that I won the National Open in 82 with. And it was actually the first car donated to the museum. Was it really? Yeah. What we do is uh, we lift the wing off and put, I have the radius rod off or the uh, Nerf bar. And anybody wants to sit in it, we love to sit in it. Yes, yeah, so my friend Jamie Ball from Knoxville tweeted back a picture that he's... What's going on here, Lynn? Oh, we're selling... Uh, <laughs> a friend of mine who passed away, we're selling uh, 
his memorabilia. Yeah. And that appeared in his memorabilia. It was a joke years ago. And I thought he would appreciate me putting it on my car and yep. showing everybody that that was in his repertoire. They, I think they put it in a, a magazine some years ago or a paper, you know, just as a joke. Well, Connor reminds me of the Paxton to the moon I, situation. I, I don't know. I, it, it was a joke on me and I thought it was pretty funny. And I don't mind poking fun of myself. There's the, uh, that guy, the Hamilton Motorsport guy, the guy that you broke his nose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ow. I broke his nose. So you told no, me. Yes. Mitch broke yeah, his see, nose. Yeah, see, that's what I, I thought. I, just, I was just in the middle of the, the deal, that's all. But uh, to the day he died, Al said I broke his nose. Yeah. And I'm sticking with that First story. The question always was, Al, all the drivers you had, did any of them ever hurt? So yeah, Paxton broke my nose, you know. I'm going with that story. <laughs> uh, Kim's a car I like. Because it's all original. Yeah. It's the way he wants here to use an 88. That's not restored. It's all original. Yes. Look at that skull down the side, cause light. Yeah, this is a beauty. Syracuse, you can only imagine the speed that day. Yeah. Yeah, well, because we sat in a pole with that car. And we went like 137 or something. This is the car that you were on pole with? Yeah. And, uh, Later, Pouchy went up there and went 146 or 147. Like I said, he just rotated that car to Knoxville. That, that we had. I always associate the later cars with those nose cones that they yeah. used to run. Yeah. That's a sportsman. That's a Silver Springs car. Looks like a spring yeah. car, but the two before box tubing, the manual steering, a small wing, small motors with carburetors. Uh, and they had to weigh 18, 1900 pounds. So. Okay. Heavier and yeah. They were heavier, but a 20 year old car still wouldn't have featured. They, they are obsolete every, every year, you know, like a lot of the cars. This is uh, Heligus display. Heligus was built a lot of aluminum body cars back then. He was from Allentown, Pennsylvania. This was a midget or something, which you bought for a big car. A lot of work. Mm hmm. A lot of work. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Normally these cars are in some kind of order, but because of the rotation, I got, I got, they're mixed up a little bit. That's all right. And then we have the Raymer car that, that he ran for uh, Joe Harsh. Joe yeah. lives, of course, in Florida now. And he stops in here a lot. He, he said he'd love to see one of his cars in here. So, yeah. So he hooked us up with one of the owners. And a lot of badasses drove, drove the 88. Wow. Now those are the cars champions. Jack Gunn from 74 to 80. You know, he, the, the cars was a, and there, there's only three champions ever. Myself, Kramer, and Smokey. We were the only three that ever won. Three of my epic names there. Yeah. Wow. How often, how often are you open, mate? Like when do people? Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, 10 to four. And you're here each day? I'm here a lot unless I pre-schedule to go somewhere else. Yes. Our engine display in our uh, drag racing area. Yep. Now this we built in 2000, this two-story piece here. Wow. This was just donated this past week, this car here. Was it really? Yeah. Oh gosh. I was just with Bruce on Wednesday. Were you? Yeah, we had to go to a funeral of a good friend of ours. That's the problem with us old racers. That's we, why we I need either the one laying down or the one sitting there watching them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, I need to remind you how important you are to all this, mate. Well. I know you don't like me saying that, but mate, you, you're so important to all this. Yeah, here's the very <laughs> He doesn't like hearing that. What a legend. Wow. Truly incredible. This, uh, our wall of engine is here. This, I think, is pretty neat. Uh, Henry Ford, well, he's normally up there, but we're changing a water line. And then you get it changed out. There's Henry. 
Yep. Henry Ford beat 15 million Model T engines from 1908 to 27. And this is your basically your 20 horsepower Model T. Now the Rayfield Carburetor and the distributor, Mr. LaRue ran that right here at Latimer Valley. He, pe- he gave that right? to us. So that's your 20 horsepower. Then you fast forward 100 years to the small block Chevy, eight, 900 horsepower. So there's 100 years of racing. Yep. Right there, very simple. And then you just travel this down and then come back. You see it through all its different phases. Maybe not all the phases, but a whole lot of them. Now this is the, the ZL1, the Chevy that I ran in, in that car over there. And then that's the Yanko. Same part number, it's just Yanko asked me to run his blocks because he knew we were successful with the aluminum block. Yes, you were. Of course, this is a solar car. The body's right here. <laughs> I didn't even see that. I know. It's, we tucked it in. We had no place to put it. Uh, the local college, once a year, they would go to different places. This one, the last time this one ran was 2001, and it went from Chicago to L.A. It's is that on, right? It's on the bearing at the end. Where do you start and stop with this stuff, mate? Because you've outgrown, well, you, you, you've outgrown it. Huh? You've outgrown this place already, oh, haven't you? Oh, yeah. We're, we're, I'll show you plans to wing out that part over there. Yeah. Lena, let me ask right. you, how do people support this? How do people support you? Well, can, if the, you turn around and you look at the wall. Yeah, can I, I, I want to ask walls you. walls are very important. Now, that wall is a finished wall. Uh, there'll be no more put on there. That we have outside walls like that for a thousand bucks you can put a you know on yep. or somebody or what have you yep i'll show you outside i mean pretty neat when you have a world champion very much ready on your wall uh-huh and that wasn't a gift he sent us a check for a thousand bucks so i thought that was pretty nice of me yeah thank you for doing this mate this is so important for the sport not just in pennsylvania but the sport in general. Yeah, the... I know. Well, we, that's why we trade with every other museum. Yeah. Uh, we're not in competition with anybody. We're here to help them. Anything that does them good going to do us good in the long run. Preserve the past to ensure the future. Yeah. Yep. Well, this is, like I said, this is our drag racing area. Except the motors, I'm kind of in charge of those. I have Jeff Gold is my representative for the drag racing. I kind of let him make the calls on this down yep. here. Yep, yep. Uh, Bruce, like I said, I was with Bruce. This is his, his match race car. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Of course, Jerry Stahl, the header builder, good friend of ours, who passed away. That was his first sign, we, the first set of headers. And of course, Grumpy Jenkins, he was notorious for his Chevy motors and stuff. And he was in Pennsylvania, so we have a lot of his experimental stuff here. <laughs> yeah. You don't meet current drivers with nicknames like Grumpy. Well, he, he, it was a perfect name for him, though. <laughs> he was Grumpy. Maybe, maybe Sammy should have had that name, too. <laughs> Could have been. <laughs> He's not by me. Uh, no, no. Saw him sitting in the Henderson I know, you made him smile. smile. from one ear to ear. Everybody maybe. said, how'd you get him to do that? I said, I didn't have anything to do with it. <coughs> Excuse me, maybe you just have to take the Henderson's car. Uh, Oh. You could have a hell of a race oh. uh, by the uniforms in here. There's, of course, Horn and Hender ships. Uh, here you got. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know, Johnny Thompson, Dan Johnson, Wayne Dorsler, Bud Tingle's dad. There's Fitzgerald, Keith Coughlin, Donnie Kreitz, Allen, Stevie Smith, Freddie Raymer, Billy Wells, Pouch, Freddie Raymer. Billy Pouch, Dave Blaney. Dave Blaney, you know, all Hall of Famers right there. <laughs> and obviously and you they play. keep coming in, you know, they just keep coming in. Well, you got room up the roof there well, I a got, little bit. Yeah, well, Al Herman, I, I just got his uh, uniform in uh, a week ago, so I'm making another. Yeah, I got a, I got 10 pounds of shit in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to add that. Uh, no, no, I know exactly. <laughs> Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Just walk out and see Billy Moyer's late model here. Yeah, he won the uh, World of Outlaws Championship. But this is kind of our stock car area up here. Kind of, yeah. Oh, wow.
because this is, uh, if you come over here, this is, it, we all started with the, the old whole body coops with the yep. flatheads. Yep. And then from that, they started cutting the cars down, putting overheads in it. You know, there's a 34 sedan all cut up, Model A coupe cut up. And then the bodies were getting hard to come by. Yeah. So they called them supers. And all you had to have was a 30 by 90 inch wheelbase. You didn't need a body, just to kind of wrap. And from that, you either went stock car racing or sprint car racing. That's that's how it went around here. <laughs> just remarkable. Yeah. This gives it a neat effect from up here looking down on Absolutely. Things. So do you have and the members? reason we did this is we hit bedrock back here. Okay. And we knew our next build had to go to a different level. So we, that's why this. So are people members of here? Do you have an annual membership yeah. kind of thing? Oh, people yeah. can buy oh, a membership? Yeah. We've got a newsletter good. that goes out four times a year. Very, very good. I don't doubt it. Uh, we have, well, we've got we got good people. Uh, that's the car that that uh, Bill Elliott flipped down at Talladega. Yeah. And that is the original car. Is it really? Yeah. And uh, the Johnny Botch modified after he was killed the next year I drove the car, too. Goodness. I think I got a second at the Grove in it. Did you really? Yeah. God, look at that thing. Yeah, she's a little twisted up. Now this we built in uh, 2001. Excuse me, 2011. We built this section, which gives us Bonneville. Yep. Okay. Uh, snowmobiles <laughs> uh, built in York. Yep. Our research library is, is over here behind that wall right there. <laughs> Chris Economy donated all kinds of stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, what a legend he was. Wow. Huh. This is home base. We've got a spurt region at ACA here. Lynn, it's just breathtaking. Just breathtaking. Yeah, this bike's had a lot of records out of Bonneville. I went to Bonneville two years ago. Did you? What an experience. Uh, I went with the speed demon team. And I just had a heart attack and I, I was on blood thinner and I couldn't I couldn't fly with the group that I was going to go with. Actually, Apple Chevrolet with Bob Stewart. You need to go with uh, Biggie with the Maxwell team and go with speed demon. I went with them Yeah. with George Poteet. What an experience yeah. that was. Well, Kowalski goes out every year, Ed. I've seen that car. Yep. I think he just set a record out there. Parachute, wow. It's incredible, mate. Just incredible. The Dean of Motorsports, Chris Okomaki Library. Haha. <laughs> yeah, we can keep this locked unless there's somebody in here. Now, I'm filming this, but I want people to come and see this for themselves. Like, it's. You can't just say, oh, yeah, I saw it on, on Wade's video. They've got to come here and see this well, and do a tour with you. See it. you can't. There's people... no way you can see everything because uh, it's just so many, there's just so much stuff here. I get people come back and they say, well, how long has that been here? I said, it's been here for a couple of years. Well, I didn't see it the last time. Here, just hold on to that. Yep, got it. This, this is the... Chris Economy, all walls, Chris's stuff. And if you look in here, we got all his personal effects in here. And uh, he left us money when he died. Oh, did he really? Sustained his stuff and it's offered. Yes, it is. First person I saw when I walked in. Yeah. There he is in that big donkey, the 707. That's, that's Jan. And there's stuff in the case here. It's cool in here because we yep. have to keep it at a certain temperature. In yep. Here. My goodness me. Now, this is kind of the sorting room over here. <laughs> Are you serious? Books and, and what have you. This is kind of where our people work. 
go through things. What a painting that is. Yeah, that's uh, Altoona Ford Speedway. Jeez, oh, Pete. And uh, those, these uh, things on the wall here, that's all Altoona. We have the largest collection of Altoona stuff there is in the world. That's actually down to Charlotte. That was the board. Yeah, that just noticing board that. The boards. Yeah. Oh. Those were the super speedways back from 1910 to 1930. Yeah. So that's why that is there, the boards. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, wow. Goodness. Oh, and there's your door you were talking about. Yeah. He asked if he wanted it. I said, yeah, for our library. Yeah. yeah. Makes perfect sense, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> Tell me that again, Lynn. This is the... The car that's inside there was the last dirt car to qualify and run at Indy in 1956. That's, that's uh, getting ready for the first race in 1911. And that Ray Darun won it. 32 car over there. <laughs> oh, wow. Large. Pretty interesting. It uh, it killed three drivers in four years. Oh my goodness! This yeah. car. It, uh, first driver was Dick Linder, was Gus's brother that I raced with. Yeah. Well, he went over there. I took him going over the wall, of Trenton, and killed him. Oh goodness. Okay. And uh, oh goodness. Now the car wasn't hurt bad, but I think it broke his neck or something. The next race, they put Van Johnson in it. And there's Van at Langhorn in it. And he won Langhorn. In other words, killed the driver at Trenton. Then they ran the 100 mile at Langhorn. He won that. Then they went to run the Grove, and the throttle stuck on Joe Barza's car, <clears throat> flipped him, and killed him. So, killed the driver, won a race, killed the driver. And then two years later. Uh, and people thought nothing of getting back into that. No. Well, the first two were just freaks. The, the last one, when uh, Hugh Randall got killed. Uh, the car was, it was a hooligan. That guy ever work out any good, this bloke? I don't remember him, is he any good? Who? That guy. Boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he yeah. went all right, didn't he? Uh, well, that, that was winning the last third race of my point in 64. Gosh. You could spend a whole day here. Oh, yeah, just in this room. There's just, this, there's just little tidbits of stuff in here from Buster Worky and Tommy Hendershits. Uh, up there is Johnny Paul's his jetting and stuff. There's just so much stuff in here. But again, it's a repair shop and we use it. In other words, yep. we yep. Can fix something, we, we do that. Sorry about that, they're getting ready for the That's okay. There's more. Yeah. Well, we just moved a lot of stuff down over the hill. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is getting ready to go down over. That's the Ellis Brothers car, the helmet with uh, yep. Bobby Marshman. Do you get That's sad? Paul Rubin, 64. Do you get sad when these cars are leaving for auction? They must be like kids to you. Well, I I was part owner in this car for a while. Uh, as long as you go to a good home, I, I don't have a problem. <laughs> I, What's a good home, Lynn? A good home is somebody that takes care of them and brings them out to different events. Okay, so not house. just hide them away, bring them no, out. That's right. I see too much of that private collections where they, they put them in a hole and nobody gets a chance to enjoy them, you know. Man, he's all the Hamilton car. Now, Ray Lee Goodwin set that record in 60, oh. in 74. That, that was, Ray Lee set that record at Tampa with that. Of course, Ray Lee just passed away. The car that Mitch Smith sat, you sat with. Now, we own both these cars. Really? Well, we actually own them. All of these, but the young one. We, we own the Circle car, and yeah. Mac McLean, and the Larry Dixon car. These are two champ cars. Yeah, the Larry Dixon car is just gorgeous. I ran against when Robert Smith ran it. Now, I bought that car, and then I sold it to a guy, and he restored it. Now, he passed away, and he donated it to us. Remember when your old man owned the garage? Yep. And you're a kid kicking around it yeah. and helping to clean stuff up and yeah. helping people. Did you ever dream that you would be so immersed? Well, you, you don't know. You know, you, you, you're you enthusiastic about what you're doing, okay? 
And if what you're doing puts you from one rung of the ladder, then that's good, you know? And you keep that enthusiasm. Yeah. You climb the ladder far enough, that's good. Sometimes you get the opportunity and sometimes you don't, you know? It's just you gotta make the best of your time, you know? Is it an obsession or a passion? Yeah, probably both. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's something that at a young age I fell in love with. And, now I'm an old fart, an old, old fart, and uh, I still I still have an obsession with it. Probably more with the history of it now than I'm not involved with the modern end of it now. Although I appreciate that too. Yes. I like, you know, Lance Louise. Yeah. Brown, still, you know, still being very competitive. Wow. So that was remarkable look at the countryside around it we're not in an industrial park in suburbia we're in this beautiful natural parkland you must come here people told me it was incredible but I never really knew how incredible it was huge thanks to Lynn Paxton for bringing me to this incredible place <laughs>